Hey everybody, it's Aquila DeHaan and this is a Lefty Knitter podcast. My name's Aquila and I live in Baltimore, Maryland and yeah, today should be a quiet recording. It's Friday. I took a day off. Everybody's at work or school. <laughs> the only interruptions I might have are the cats. Our new cat Luna is down here eating behind me. We actually got a new feeding system for them because after the vet visit and they both had gained some weight, um, Mia was like 16 pounds and we we're like, well, we got to do something about that. The vet had told us about this um, feeding system. I can't remember what it's called and I don't want to take it away from her right now, but it is little mice and they're plastic and you put food in them so they have to actually bat the mice around to get their food out of it. So it's, um, you're, after they get used to using them, you're supposed to then start hiding them. And cats like to hunt and that's like the whole thing. So they, you do it at night and they hunt for them and they eat and then they're not bothering you in the morning for food. Although we're still giving them food in their regular bowls, they get just less and they don't get to graze all day, which is what we were doing, which was really terrible. Sorry, I got new frames, new glasses, and it's very strange seeing them. I love them. The arms are this cool red color. And I've always wanted clear frames and I was always just too nervous about getting them. I've always just had darker frames and change isn't always easy, I guess, you know, change for anything. Change for jobs, change for schools, change, get your hair cut, like, way different. It's change, and it's weird seeing yourself that way, so it's very strange still seeing these glasses. My husband is not a fan, but maybe he just has to get used to seeing me wearing them. Like, I don't always see myself wearing them because I'm not constantly looking at myself where he has to see me. You know. So I know in the previous episodes I had I, I felt they were very rushed and I wasn't doing even like vlog style because I just wasn't recording bits of video and this one isn't gonna be like that either. It's gonna be um a long video with just uh all my projects and yeah sometimes life just takes over and that's what happens. I, <clears throat> it, it, and everybody has things they're going through in their life, right? I mean, that's just how life is. And mine's not any worse or any better than anybody else's. And I can't make excuses. And, and it's just how you deal with it. And it's been really stressful. Just a lot of the mostly work for me and I know I haven't really talked about what I do on this podcast and I um my job has a lot of social media rules and not that I'm doing anything that I think breaks them it's just easy for me just not to mention um my work um but we are so in my department we're implementing a new paperless system for for what we do and again change is a huge change people are used to paper 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 in your face um and going paperless is not easy it's not easy for the people that we have to work with in the other departments and it's not easy for us either and because it affects mostly my it affects the whole place where i work right so but because my department is the department that is implementing this program, we have really been like kicked in the face. Like not, not literally, obviously. Um, they don't like the change and because we're the ones implementing it, we're the ones that are getting all the flack, I guess, like the, the pushback and the, the cursing and, um, the phone calls and they don't want to do it and they don't understand it and they don't, you know, and 
look, I didn't put the money out for this program. I didn't give it the go ahead. I do not have that kind of power. <laughs> My higher ups have all made these decisive changes and they are the ones that are not feeling this stress and this anxiety about the implementation of this. And we've been working in this system for um, over three months at this point. Um, and we've been rolling out slowly and doing training and one-on-one -on -one trainings and very small group trainings. And <clears throat> just the negativity gets me down so much. And I bring that home and it's really hard to not bring that home. And I try to leave it at the door. And it affects everything. It affects your whole, your whole being. So that also affects my knitting. It affects my socialization with friends. So it's been really hard. This, this weekend is Maryland Sheep and Wool and we're going, I believe Saturday because it's the chance of less rain. <laughs> In Maryland, you just don't know. Maryland Sheep and Wool, it can be hot and muggy and gross, or it can be raining and muddy and miserable. Or it can be in between. Or it can be both in the same day. Yeah, so I miss my knitting girls, and I miss all of you, and I miss um, not connecting as much. I haven't even been posting much on Instagram Um because of all of it. So I know we all have things we go through and, and that's just how, how it is. So I appreciate all the people that have now sat through this seven minute ramble that come back and watch and um, just support all your other makers and all your other, your, your knitting friends, whether they're, they're just um, online friends and you don't even know them like just going on and saying hey how are you today can make somebody's day and it makes the whole world a difference and yeah so I need to start doing that again I need to just be more active in my group in 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 the group of of the making community I should say because that's we all need that we all need the positivity and the the caring and I can ramble like forever. All right, so let me just, we're just gonna go right into it, right? So these, I have three finished objects, right? You've seen two of these a few times. First one is Wolf and Fawn Knits Earth Mama Leg Warmers. So I had told you many times previously about cables and how I was worried about them and I did so well and I'm really proud of myself and just reading the charts from left to right being a lefty knitter and really making this work I had to rip it back at some point because I did a cable the wrong way I am extremely proud of myself and it's that tiny little thing and everybody should be proud of themselves for just those tiny little things because you know what they are important and yeah so I used this is yarn and pattern and buttons my husband all got for me for advent he went a little crazy and did a homemade advent calendar so this yarn and I did not use he bought four of these this is Quince and Company Chickadee and it's the Heathers this is 100% American wool it is I think this is a sport weight yarn. It's 181 yards and it's called Kitty Wake 151. I believe that is the, the colorway. He had bought me four of these. Here it is. You can see the fourth one in the skein because I did not use the fourth one. I didn't break into it at all. And I actually still have a decent amount of the third. I didn't weigh it yet. I don't know how these are gonna be hard to show, I guess. So I've now sewn the buttons on. I actually posted a picture of these on my Instagram page without the buttons in bare feet. <laughs> I had planned to wear these. I went out and actually bought shoes to wear these with for Maryland Sheep and Wool, but the, with the rain and the mud, I'm not quite sure that's gonna happen. Oh, and here are the buttons that John had purchased. 
so I sewn them on. Now, <clears throat> these buttons, I guess, are maybe laser carved. They're a little rough on the edges. These are not buttons I think I would buy for a cardigan that I would have to button over and over again. I feel like it would uh, be rough on the buttonhole. But because these, you don't ever have to unbutton them, it's perfectly fine. So there's the bottom. It has all these little tiny cables that go down kind of around like a little booty shoe or booty. I don't know what to call them. Or, or like even cute Mary Janes, I guess, you know, whatever you would want to wear with them. This cable is so beautiful. The back is just a rib. And these are wonderful. I, I have both, I promise. I'm not just showing one and saying I'm done. There's two. This pattern was really great. John got it, I think, when they were having their Knit Picks pattern sale. So I highly recommend um, doing that. I believe she, she sells it on um, Ravelry. <laughs> can't think of words. So there's one. Um, I followed the pattern. I, did, I used whatever size is and I had talked about this too because I couldn't figure out if they made it a two and a half or whatever. It was really strange and then I realized that they do because I'm um, a goofball and I should have just googled it beforehand. So they make that. The second one uh, is the underwing mitts. And I've made these prior. Erica Hauser, her patterns are wonderful. If you want to do color work, her patterns are written really well. The charts are really great. There's only a few spots where you have to maybe catch your floats. And I, I do catch my floats in gloves only because of rings. So if it's over four or five stitches, I catch those floats. And another project I have to show you, there was like nine stitches. I didn't catch my floats on those. I wasn't... Um, wasn't doing that so these are actually a commission I talked about that <clears throat> I'm trading with another artist for a painting so I thought that was cool look I need to take my ring off I feel like I don't want to mess these up these aren't mine so I'm gonna take that ring off and she had first requested a baby pink and I had sent her options of this baby pink that I had that was actually really pretty and then the hot pink and she's like oh I really like the hot pink and she felt like Maybe um, it wouldn't show dirt as much, even though there is white in these gloves. So it has the moon phases. It has this cute little circle pattern on the palm. This checkerboard pattern follows in the thumb. And then I did do the duplicate stitch on these. When I made these for my daughter, MJ, she didn't want the color, the duplicate stitch. The only modification I did to the, these um, the pattern calls for less rounds of ribbing, and I did more because I wanted them to be a little longer. The yarn I used, I again, also followed U.S. size ones. On these also, the first time I made these, I did them in Magic Loop. This time when I made them, I used my 9-inch circulars, and it turned out way better. I showed you, before I cast these on, I think, what had happened with um, hers, and doing magic loop I was pulling my stitches too tight so when I was going from the back to the front in the magic loop this was pulled so tight that it was actually divoted it actually is a little divoted here and I think it's just the nature of what stitches are there my my floats don't look bad but my weaving of the color those little um what is that called again duplicate stitches uh didn't look so great but they're on the inside um, there are two. I did both. And um, so I really like using my nine inch circulars for these for color work. I actually would prefer to do any color work in the round without having to do magic loop because I feel like I pull those first couple stitches way too tight. And if you have floats near those stitches, you're going to be pulling those floats way, 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 way too tight. So the yarn I used for this, um, I used the Knit Picks palette in the cream colorway. I had to order another ball of this. I didn't have enough. This is, yeah, this is cream. And I didn't use much of the second ball. So I have a lot more to use for some other color work project. And the black was, it's the Cascade Fingering yarn. 
Where is the label? There it is. The other pair I made for Michaela, I used the Knit Picks um, palette in the black, which is what I had left. Um, I knew I didn't have enough of this, so I opted to use my Cascade 220 in the fingering weight, which I really like it. It's kind of a light fingering, if you ask me. I used this in one of my sweaters, and it was a light fingering. Um, but it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool, 50 grams, gives you 273 yards in the fingering. So if you double that for like a 100 gram skein, that's almost 540 yards. So it's definitely a light fingering. You can, well, you might not be able to tell. And it, it's kind of loosely plied, if you ask me. There's, it's a two ply also. It's a loose two ply, which definitely makes it, I think, a light fingering. I don't know what Ravelry has it um, coded as, so there's that. There's those. I need to get those off to her. Actually, I might see her. My husband and daughter are throwing a huge party here at the house. It's going to be on my birthday. It's kind of for my birthday, but I really don't care that it's like, it doesn't have to be for my birthday. That's just kind of weird. <sighs> All right, so the last finished object I had in Instagram stories. I don't know if I posted an actual picture on Instagram, but this comes out of my Strange Brew book by Tin Can Knits, and I am loving this book. I want to make all the things. I want to use all kinds of random bits of fingering weight yarns, double them up for some of the DK weight sweaters, and just say like on this sweater, the first stripe be one color, the color work in it be another color, and then the next section, just pick two more random doubled up fingering weight yarns. This is the Compass Cow. I don't have it. Um, I don't think I have it bookmarked anymore because I'm on to another project in here. Um, it uses sport weight yarn, which, to find it for you real quick and it stopped happening um that's okay it's in here compass cow <clears throat> it uses sport weight yarn so i used this hand spun malabrigo yarn that when i measured it it was kind of a sport weight yes there are thick and thin spots yes that does affect certain things and in the color work it, it does kind of make it lumpy and bumpy and that's okay with me the other thing, the other, what I used was, and Good Karma Farms, I believe, is going to be at Maryland Sheep and Wool. I've seen them there um, previously. I think that's where I bought this. This is their color blurs, and you get six colors. Six colors, and you get 75 yards in each color of a sport weight. That is a lot, I feel like. Um, to do like some projects like this. This is actually a wool alpaca blend. It's really, really nice yarn. And I really liked um, working with it a lot. So if you get a chance to try them out, Good Karma Farms. Good Karma Farm. Color blurs. My set, I don't remember what the colorway was called because I don't think it was on here. I think it has a name. But there it is. Those are my six colors. I have lots left so I can use it for something else. The pattern calls for, it's a eight different charts in the sections, or eight sections, you'll see what I mean, and they're different color work charts. I just chose to do six. That's my modification. The other modification is I used one color, the gray, as my main color and it was the background color for all my charts. I didn't mix and match like in the pattern that it calls for. Um, 72 stitches, um, knit all the things, knit, what is her plot? That's really, I'm terrible. Remembering podcast names, she got inspired by me and is making one in a, I believe worsted weight cause she has a bunch of worsted weight scraps. And I was helping her figure out the math for that. So I can't wait to see her finished object, which she is like super fast and gets all kinds of stuff done. So it'll probably be on her next podcast. So you should check that out. When I blocked it, I pinned it a little too aggressively. And you can see that there. But here is my... So I did it in color order I thought worked really well as a gradient. 
and all the charts are different. I did not just do the first six. I actually skipped one or two and did uh, the top two because I liked those better. So my cow is not as tall as it would be if you were to do the eight charts, but I think it's still really beautiful. I've not really made many cows, but I think this is really nice. And it's really, really pretty. And I am really proud that, again, it's the little things that I used my hand spun yarn. And I'm going to use this again for something else. Maybe I'll make a color work hat out of this book and use the same colors. And maybe it'll be a gift for somebody if they want something like this. But I think it's really beautiful. No, I'm just making a hot mess of my already hot mess hair. But, man, I really did block it crazily because, like, you can see the <laughs> where I pinned it real real tight. That's okay. It, I can always redo it. But, again, I think it turned out really well. I held the secondary color dominant on all the charts only because some of these colors aren't really very contrasty. These are, if you took a black and white picture, these all would probably look really close. These down here would be the only ones that might have some sort of difference if you took a black and white picture of it. Um, so that's why I was trying to hold the color dominant on that. I didn't want the gray to overpower because in some of the spots where it's really lumpy, it did still overpower that dominant, the, the color I was holding dominant. But that's okay. So, All right, the last one is the actual compass pullover. And this is also out of the book. Uh, Strange Brew. I am making the four to six year old size for Miss Z. And she picked these colors. They are not contrasty enough if you ask me, but this is what she wanted and this is what she's getting. These are on, uh, this is a US size four. I have already split for the sleeves. I'll show you the yarns. This yarn was dyed. This was Knit Pick Spare in the Stroll Fingering that my husband dyed with black walnuts and then he took logwood and dyed over it a little bit with the logwood. So this is what we got. And it's a very tonal purple. It's really beautiful. I have two skeins of this, but the other skein is not as tonal. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit as much of the body in this colorway. It keeps unfocusing because my face. Um, knit the rest of the body in this and the rip bottom ribbing and the sleeves I think I might use the other purple because I don't feel like um changing yarns every other row I can't think of what that's called this yeah sorry the other yarn I'm using is Marigold Jen and I'm now done with the color work because it's all in the yoke I'm done with it and this is Marigold Jen, who is retiring, and oh my gosh, if you get to see her at Maryland Sheep and Wool, you should buy stuff from her. Her yarn is quite amazing. It is not focusing. There you go. Now, this was not a full skein. I used, she sells half skeins, and that's really awesome. And I had held this double in my Camaro sweater, if you remember that. So you get, it's called halvesies, and you get 230 yards for 50 grams. So, um, this colorway was called Tealicious, and I love it, and this is going to be a perfect amount to put in my blanket. Let me kind of stretch, pull this out correctly. So, again, these colors are not contrasting enough, but Hazel picked them, and I'm going with it. So, I am now done the color work. This is the compass cow and it used some of the uses some of the charts from the 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 compass this is the compass pullover. It uses some of the charts from the cow I just showed you, which is the compass cow. And here's where I've split for the sleeve and on the other side. So I'm now just working the body. I think this is what I'm gonna take to Needles Up. I'm actually really excited. I've never been to a Needles Up event. They're very new. This is Sue and Chelsea's baby from Legacy Fiber Art. So I'm excited to see them. I'm excited. I met um, Amy Beth 
from the Fat Squirrel Speaks. I've met her last year. I saw her sitting on the hill at Maryland Sheep and Wool and I was like, I like crept up to her and I was like, I just wanted to say hi and I don't want to keep you, but I just want to say hi. And that's like, really, I felt like the most awkward person ever. She was super nice. So I'm actually really excited to see her again. She probably has so many people that talk to her, she won't remember and that's okay because that's how it is. Um, but I will be making sure I say hello to everyone. I, I'm, I've never actually bought in tufted woolens before. I don't know if I've ever had a chance in any of the places I've been to buy tufted woolens. And they have a special show colorway called Lemon Tart, and I'm actually really excited for that. But I also looked on their website and was writing down a bunch of colorways that I, or colorways, a bunch of flavors that I really want to try. And here's the ones I want to try from Tuft. Russian Flower, Night Sky, Honey Patchouli, and Red Currant. The first three have patchouli in them. I love the small patchouli. My husband deals with it. <laughs> Red. So, and I also saw some uh, soaps that I thought he might really like. So I think I'll be buying him a soap or two. He will not be going. He is at work. Um, the pottery people, I can't remember the name of the pottery people, but if you go to Needles Up and you can look it up, it is uh, today at Columbia, in Col near Columbia, near Catonsville Community College. Uh, VIP was 12 to 1, the rest is 1 to 6. I'll be there. I'm going to try to post this so you might even see it before then. You might even be there. So, hey! And if not, tomorrow is when I think we're going to Maryland Sheep and Wool. They're having a podcaster meetup near the 4-H building at 1.30. I know Classy Squid is having a meetup to meet her on the hill, not the hill, well, it's, it is a hill, near the one barn where they do the sheep shearing. So she's meeting people there. You can go to her Instagram page and see what time uh, you can meet her. I know Paige the Framer is going to be there and she'll be at Sheep and Wool, so people could go to try to see her. Amy Beth will be... Probably a sheep and wool again. I doubt she's just coming for Friday and then leaving because that would be silly. And that's about it. So that's life. And I rambled a lot. And this is a longer episode. And I know people have, I think, really enjoyed the shorter episode. So this one's a little longer. And yeah. So maybe I'll see you at Needles Up. Maybe I'll see you at Sheep and Wool. If not, everybody just have a good day. Compliment one another. Give some positive vibes, help one another, and yeah, that's that's really what um, every community needs, not just the knitting community, and yeah, that's it. I'm not going to ramble again. All right. Oh, I forgot to show. I have one acquisition. I didn't buy it. My husband bought it for me. He is quite the enabler. This is from Dragon Horde Yarn. I have never bought her yarn before. Tristan, I believe she's having a trunk show at the Knot House today. And then she'll probably be at Maryland Sheep and Wool also. Um, my husband really fell in love with her uh, Outlander colorways. We are huge Outlander fans. And the two colorways I think he really wanted sold out super fast. And he ended up getting this one. But her dyeing is quite beautiful. I've never seen her yarn in person. So Dragon Horde yarn is not going to focus. This is her um, fingering weight yarn, 75, 25, 436 yards. And this is Lolly Brock. My husband's like, I buy you a lot of green yarn, don't I? And I was like, yeah, but green's my favorite color. So it's okay. So there we go. It's beautiful. Her color, it's, it's, so tonal, but not tonal, because there's so many colors in here. I mean, like here you can see like super massive, more foresty greens, but then there's all this blue green and spots of black and not so much black, but maybe like a darker color of the green. It's just, it's really dyed so beautifully and I'm excited to work with it. So if you haven't bought her yarn, I say go at least look at it. Go to the Knot House if you're there for the weekend. It's in Frederick, Maryland. And that's it. That's everything, guys. Okay. Knit happy. And hopefully I'll be back on my weekly schedule. 
as before. All right.